today we are going to see about neurosecretion in insects. Neurosecretion in insects. Okay. So there are all the things we are going to see about an interaction. And if you know what is more and is neurosecretion, and if what is location of neurosecretory cells, then what are all the insect hormones and their functions? We are going to see now. First, we'll see about a short introduction about the neuroendocrine system in insects. Okay. In insects, the hormones are very important in coordinating development and physiology. Because all the processes are being regulated by neural and endocrine systems. Okay. All the processes are regulated by neural and endocrine system. So in insects also the hormones are very very important. And in the case of insects, the endocrine system is very simple and it produces very few hormones than that in the vertebrate. See already in the under the endocrine uh, system we have seen few glands, I mean the master gland, pituitary gland, then adrenal glands, then pancreatic glands, then uh, thyroid glands, all these we have seen, isn't it? In the case of insects, it is very simple and they produce very few hormones. Okay. And now we see what is neurosecretion. What is known about neurosecretion? In insects, certain neurons are able to elaborate and secrete specifically active substances called neurosecretion. See here. Only the neurons are able to secrete these active substances and that is said to be neurosecretory substance. They are also called neurohormones. Okay? They are also called neurohormones and this neurohormones is the storage, synthesis and release of hormones from neurons. So it is nothing but it is synthesized by the neurons it is stored in the neurons and released by the neurons. Okay, so that is all you should know about neurosecretion. And now comes the location of these uh, hormone secreting neurons. See, in insects, the hormones are secreted by neurosecretory cells, and they are normally found in clusters in the median and later parts of the brain. See, uh, here you can see in the diagram, these clusters of cells are called neurosecretory cells. These clusters, these clusters are said to be neurosecretory cells. Okay? And these, uh, these are the type, different types of neurons or nerve cells whose function is to translate neural signals into chemical stimuli. So that is the function of these neurosecretory cells. And these neurosecretory cells are the clusters of cells found in the later part of the brain. And their main function is to translate neural signals into chemical stimuli. Okay. And now come to the insect hormones or all the insect hormones basically there are three types of insect hormones brain hormone melting hormone juvenile hormone okay there are three types of hormones brain hormone molting hormone and juvenile hormones we'll see that one day the first one is brain hormone so this is also called the neuro hormone it is produced by the central nervous system. The brain hormone is also called neurohormones and it is produced by central nervous system. The first neuropeptide proctolin was isolated from cockroach in the year 1975. So the first time this brain hormone is isolated from cockroach in the year 1975. And that is the neuropeptide proctolin hormone. Then this brain hormone contains so many types. The important brain hormones are 
diuretic hormone, antidiuretic hormone, halitotropins, halitostatins, and the PTTH, that is pro-thoracotropic hormone. Then pheromone biosynthesis stimulating hormone. So these are the various types of brain hormones. And the next type of hormone that is molten hormone. See the molten hormone is secreted by the prothoracic gland and its main function is it is responsible for the normal molting, growth and maturation of the insect. So at the time of growth this molting process is very very important and it is these molting hormones that is responsible for the growth and maturation of the insects. And under this molting hormone also there are three types of hormones that is egg dyson, egg dystione and egg dystyroids. So these are three uh, molting hormones secreted by the thoracic glands in insects. And as I have told you, the main function of this molting hormone is for the process of molting, growth and also maturation of the And the next hormone is duanyl hormone. Duanyl hormone. See, this is secreted by Parpora alevita in the brain. Okay, it is secreted by Parpora alevita. And this is responsible for the growth of insects. Then duanyl hormone retains larval characters. Then usually insect larva will molt for four times in its lifetime. And the fourth molt converts the larva into pupa. So at this point of view, the duanyl hormone is very, very important. See, conversion of larva into pupa can be done uh, during the fourth molting only and it is done by duanyl hormone. So it is high during the first, second and third molt. And in the fourth molt, the hormone secretion, I mean the duanyl hormone secretion will be low. Okay. And the duanyl hormones are important for the production of egg in female insects. Okay. Not only for the growth, but also in the case of female insect, the duanyl hormones are very important for the production of egg. And now we see the main functions of duanyl hormone. Already I have told you mainly the duanyl hormones are necessary for the molting and also growth and also for the production of egg in the case of female insect. But still, in general, I mean, there are so many main functions that is metamorphosis, metallogenesis, diapause, and body cell. And in addition, you should know there are different types of duanyl hormones. Uh, duanyl hormone O, then duanyl hormone 1, then duanyl hormone 2, then 4 methane duanyl hormone. These are different types of duanyl hormones. Okay. And now let's see a simple experimental proof showing that the duanyl hormones are very important and what will happen if the carpora areta is removed from the brain at the time of molting. Okay. See, here is a simple experimental proof. See, when this corpus aleta are removed in the first stage larva, the next molt itself will convert the larva into pupa. See, we have seen three larval stages. I mean, after three larval stages only, the fourth stage only the larva converts into pupa. But in this experiment, they have proved that if the carpus aleta are removed in the first stage of larva from the insect's brain, then immediately the next molt will convert the larva into pupa. Okay. When carpus aleta of the fourth stage larva are transplanted to its first stage larva, that also will pupate immediately. Can you get the point? Right? So, suppose first stage larva, fourth stage larva over the corpus aletava, if we transplant immediately, it will change. I mean, convert the larva into pupa. And if the corpus aleta of the first stage larva is transplanted to the fourth stage, it does not pupate. 
and because the hormone secretion will be low but it grows into larger larva and pupate after the fourth tree okay so this is one of the very simple experimental proof showing that this dwelling hormones are very important for the molting process for the conversion of larva into pupa see at the beginning uh, the secretion of dwelling hormone will be less and it will be getting increased so that the larva changes into pupa during the fourth molting stage and this diagram shows you the life cycle of this uh, insects and as i told you these are the neurosecretory cells in the brain neurosecretory cells that helps to secrete these insect hormones and especially the corpora alata plays a very important role this is the corpora alata that helps to secrete uh, these journey hormones as well and all the other brain hormones the thoracic gland also helps in secreting molting hormones okay and this is the basic uh, steps i mean in all the life cycle the first larval stage the second larval stage and third and fourth after the fourth larval stage only that converts into pupa then that pupa changes into adult during after so in every stage the insect hormones secreted by the neurosecretory cells are very 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 important then only the larva can change into pupa then the pupa can change or metamorphose into an adult insect okay right thank you very much that's all about neurosecretory cells of insects thank you